Okay, now it's time for a short tutorial on how I mark your violin fingerboard with finger tapes. You're going to find a lot of schools of thought, a lot of differing schools of thought on how many pieces of tape, what kind of tape, whether you should use little dots or cross lines or a tape for every pitch or just a couple of pitches. The way I go about marking your violin with finger tape is a minimalist approach. The reason being, I don't want to teach you to play the violin with your eyes at all. It's a fretless instrument that lives up on your left shoulder, underneath your left jawbone, very near your left ear. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn to play by ear, with our ear. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn the tuner on, and I'm going to make sure the A string is in tune. A little bit of red light on the flat side, so I'll just turn it clockwise. A little bit more. Hoping for all green. All green. Wonderful. Let's set that down. And again, you're going to see all kinds of people with their ideas on what kind of tape to use. I'll tell you why I like to use a little piece of scotch tape, otherwise known as invisible tape. The reason I like to use it is that it is invisible. It's low profile, and it's really just there for you to feel a piece of tape as a marker, just to feel something. Let me see here. The best way I know of doing this is to take a blade, take some type of a shiny back, I put the tape down but I don't stick it really hard and I make a cut with the blade we have got a nice straight hopefully cut of scotch tape then I go right here under the strings, got it sort of loosely stuck to my fingers, I come down to where I, with my many, many years of doing this, I can't tell you, I wish I had, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've done this. I think it's going to be right about here. I want to make sure that it's straight. Looks pretty straight to me. And it's going to be the pitch of B. Alright, so you notice I leave the edges loose. So I'm not dead on for sure yet. Now I'm going to use my thumb at this point in time, my thumbnail. I'm going to press it right up to there. And we're going to see what the tuner has to say about that pitch. I want B. It's not quite B, it's a little flat, which means I went too far that away. So I'm going to come up, I'm going to wiggle it, just wiggle just a little bit so it loosens back up, and come up just a hair, just a little bit. I'm going to try again. Well, now I've gone too far. It's 20 cents too sharp. I'm going to wiggle it back again. Split the difference. Yeah, this is kind of exacting. 
needs to be. <coughs> That's plenty green. I'm going to go for it. Here's another reason why I like to use this scotch tape, also known as invisible tape. It's really just between you and your left hand. That is low profile. For adults that are learning, even for kids that are learning, you can easily take this out to a jam session and you know apply what you're learning with me in a jam session and really not have to be self-conscious about these pieces of tape. They're not, they don't stand out. All right, now I use one more piece of tape, ladies and gentlemen, one only, and that's for the third finger. Piece of tape for the first finger, piece of tape for the third finger, and that's because we're going to use our ear to tell if our second finger goes beside the one or beside the three as we move on through lessons in level one of violin slash fiddle. <laughs> now, the third finger on A will be the pitch of D. So I want my electronic tuner to be reading out D. And it is, but it's also saying that I have not gone far enough. So I need to come this way to raise the pitch. Wiggle it just a little bit gently. And once again, Mike Mitchell is splitting the difference. Hey, that's a full on green. And if I've got a full on green, I'm going to go for that. And you see me smoothing down the tape. Here's yet another reason why I prefer to use very simple household quality scotch tape, also known as invisible tape. It has very little adhesive. So when this comes off, and it will come off, Usually around the beginning of String Builder Book 2, this stuff comes off. Sometimes we put another piece up here for the fourth finger. But usually around String Builder 2, the tape comes off. There won't be a whole lot of adhesive. It's not a real sticky proposition to try and get that tape off. So that's how it looks. And now you're ready for lesson five in Floyd Music School's violin fiddle. I'll see you there. Thanks.